Hi, my name is Greg Russell, Managing Director of Mitchell Lake US. I'm here at South Food and Wine Bar in San Francisco today having a beer with Bardia Hausman, founder of Business Catalyst. Bardia started the company in 2001 and recently sold to Adobe. Welcome, Bardia. Thanks for, uh, thanks for dropping in and having a beer today. Hey, Greg. No problems. Thank you very much. So, um, so first of all, congratulations on the exit. That's, uh, that's awesome news. Now, uh, I understand this isn't your first one. Um, I understand you sold your first venture uh, start back in 99. Um, so I guess, I guess this makes you a, a serial entrepreneur and, and a successful one at that. Yeah, I, uh, I guess you could say that. I think um, it's, yeah, I've kind of always been fiddling with different businesses and uh, to get a couple of wins uh, along the way with uh, two exits, I think it's quite good. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's fantastic. And, and, um, and how much do you think that, that first experience, um, you know, sort of contributed to your success the second time around? Were there tough lessons learned that, that went into a Business Catalyst? You know, th there was a lot that I learned from the first one. I think the biggest thing that I learned was uh, you come out of uh, an exit, particularly when you're younger, and you think uh, you're somewhat invincible. You think you can repeat that again. So I actually did a venture in between, which didn't go very far. And, uh, and that was a really good lesson. It was a good venture because I learned that, um, you know, every time you start a business, you've got to go back to the basics and you've got to try hard again. And, and I think by learning that is why I was successful again. Interesting. And, and, um, and how different were the two experiences? I mean, so the first time around you, you started and built this business in Australia, exited in Australia, um, you know, and this one uh, started in Australia, presumably, and, and, and brought it over to the U.S. and, and obviously had the exit over here. So, um, you know, did you find that that to be sort of similar or, or was the, the environment here just so much different that it was a much different experience for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess they've been different. I mean, you know, I always look at businesses as, uh, as projects, you know. So I've, I've done two different projects that have been quite successful. And um, first time around, you know, we're going through a, a, you know, the Internet's going crazy and, you know, it's all about uh, accumulating subscribers, no, no, thought about revenues and so forth and this time around I was really focused on building a real business with fundamentals and, and revenues and, and so forth so it's been different from that sense the fact that I've moved across here I think first time around I learned that if I had the exit in America it'd be a lot better uh, so second time around I wasn't going to miss out on that opportunity and that's why as soon as it made sense I packed up and uh, came to America and luckily for me I, I got an exit pretty quickly but um, so I think it's it's you know that's but other than that, it's, it's been pretty similar. And, and do you think, um, do you think being an, an experienced entrepreneur um, sort of helped you navigate the startup environment here in Silicon Valley a little bit better, or you know, did you did you find there were significant differences really? Uh, look, there was some differences. I guess you know when I came here, I had established business in Australia, and I thought that maybe I can just piggyback off the back, off the back of that. But I really had to reestablish my business. I really had to learn the ropes again in America. I had to learn the system. I had to meet new people. And you know, having had a business for many years in Australia, I couldn't leverage a lot of that just because I was in a new city. So I think from that sense, you know, it was somewhat difficult. And there was a fair bit of learning and connecting and growing and, and so forth in, in establishing the business. And, and so speaking of Adobe, I mean, how did they, how did that sort of deal come about? How did they, you know, initially notice you guys? Um, you know, was it something that you, you actively drove or, you know, how did, how did that sort of work? Yeah, look, I think, you know, I mean, I certainly didn't come here to get acquired straight away. Um, I came here to build a business. You know, I, I arrived here in end of April and by June I was talking to Adobe and by November they uh, communicated their intent to buy the business but um, you know we had a we have a business model that uh, is very similar to theirs from a the, the the target market the customers that we sell to we sell to web designers and web developers which is a big customer group for for Adobe and you know Adobe as a company is uh, is a company that's embracing moving towards services so kind of the platform that we had and our go-to-market strategy was extremely attractive but I did make sure that we were on their radar you know we, we were always very strategic on whose radar we wanted to be on and I think you can't that is a point that I think you need to keep in mind it's from upfront it's well you know who are, and it's not necessarily who are the acquirer, acquirers who are the partners who are the distribution channels you know Adobe for for my company was the number one distribution channel I needed to land on. We actually landed every other distribution channel we needed to, but they were small in size and Adobe was the big fish. 
It's just that it turned out that they bought the company. But so, um, yeah, so we always wanted to talk to them and we always made sure um, that they knew of us or, yeah. And, and so, so you mentioned that, you know, that by November they had, they had indicated their intent and, and then, you know, the deal took till the end of August, the next August to get done. So was that a, was that a pretty nerve wracking 10 months? Yeah. It was, you know, it was because, um, you know, Adobe is an awesome company and you want to work with them. I mean, if you're going to sell your company, you want to sell it to a, a company like Adobe or there are many great companies. But, um, you know, in that time, I think the biggest, so there was a commitment by us to go through and see this deal through. But, you know, the scary thing was that our product roadmap was being slowed down. You know, we were being, um, our focus wasn't on the business. And if they, they were to pull out, what impact would that have on our business? The great thing was I felt a sense of equal commitment by both sides all the way. And we did hit some funny spots where, you know, we had to go and address certain things. Um, but, you know, I felt that they were quite committed to the deal and hopefully they thought we were committed to the deal and that's why we stuck through it. And so, uh, and so you've been in San Francisco coming up on a couple of years, is that right? Yeah, just um, 18 months or so. And, um, and you, you live in the city as well, I understand? Yeah, up in North Beach, yeah. so great you, part of town. Yeah, you're enjoying it? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's happening, it's funky. I mean, um, when uh, I moved across, I really wanted to live somewhere where there was a fair bit of hustle and bustle. Yeah. So I think it's the right initial place to land somewhere like that in San Francisco, so I'm quite happy. Awesome. And um, so, so I read on your bio that uh, you are, quote, baffled and intrigued by the golden color of beer. Yeah. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit yeah. more about that. Uh, you know, um, every time there's a, a census in Australia where you know, they come and collect information, I put beer as my religion just because I think uh, it's interesting that this drink makes people happy and it's golden in colour. So I'm, I'm actually genuinely intrigued by the fact that it's golden in colour and makes you happy. So, yeah. um, so it's, it's, it's something I need to work out why it's, it's so interesting. But, yeah. Yeah. And um, oh, lots of research, I guess, is, yeah. is needed. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get <laughs> And, and so what's, uh, you must have a favorite beer drinking spot in San Francisco by now? Uh, look, all over the place. I think if you go, um, one of the things I've kind of noticed in coming to San Fran, it's just the bar scene's very different to Sydney. I mean, Sydney, you've got these big bars and outdoor and whatever. And San Francisco, it's just little halls, doors that you go in and just these more unique, small, kind of cozy bars. Uh, so there's lots of great bars. Uh, and I'm, but I'm enjoying the difference in the bar scene here versus Sydney. So you're not, uh, you're not pining for, for Sydney, for the Sydney days? Oh, look, you know, there's nothing better than drinking beer in, in Sydney summer. So I think that's, that's exactly what I'm missing out on right now. It's, uh, you know, the weather's starting to turn, get warmer in Sydney and uh, kind of feeling a little bit homesick. We're not, you know, I'm not going back this year. Uh, but, um, you know, drinking beer in Sydney is always great. So taking it back to business, what, um, y you know, what, if you're going to sort of distill everything down and, and give one key piece of advice or a couple key pieces of advice to, to entrepreneurs, you know, back in, back in Australia, um, you know, maybe that are looking to, to make, the, make the move to the big U.S. market, what, what would you say? You know, I think, you know, at the end of the day, you're building a business. It's not about U.S. or, or Australia. I think you're building a business. And as you build your business, you've got to understand you got to know where you want to go. You've got to work with the end in mind. It's, you know, how big do I want this business? Where, who are my customers? What do they look like? And I think often you come to the realization that the Australian market may not be adequate to, to, to help. And um, I think if you realize that soon, then I think you should always plan to come to the U.S. I think U.S. also serves, uh, has other benefits in the sense that, um, you know, this is Silicon Valley. There's capital. Do you need capital? I didn't need capital for my second business, but... Uh, most entrepreneurs may need capital, so this is the place to come for, for that. But I, I do think if you're serious and you want to kind of hit, at least have a go at the big time, you know, uh, success, you've got to be here versus being back in Australia. Awesome. Well, um, I think that's about all the time we have for today. Um, I just want to thank Bardia. There's uh, fantastic, insightful comments there. And um, I think we need to get down in the business of finishing these beers. So uh, thanks very much, Bardia. Thanks, Greg. Great to have you. All right. Cheers.